So today we're going to talk about fighting bots with snakes, um, or python I guess. St. Patrick didn't get rid of all the snakes, it seems, so let's go. So some stuff you don't really care about, um, about me, I'm Rebecca, um, been texting me a bit now. Last time I spoke there I was just a wee junior, but now, um, you know, I'm a wee bit bigger, a wee bit badder. And I'm still as bad as coding as I was back then. Um, so, what do you about me? Um, I really like parrots, if you can't tell. Um, I love, especially the party parrot. He's just, he's, you know, he's, he's a bit goofy. He's like me. I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a silly, silly person. So, um, if you're not too sure, I really do like parrots, by the way. So, you know. Um, but apart from parrots, what do you like? I'm not just a monomaniac. Um, I, like, I really like Python, if you can't tell. I also play a lot of online games, you know. But, you know, I live out in the middle of nowhere. Um, Balamina is famous for two things, Liam Neeson, and uh, the quality of his internet, which is uh, not great. Um, <laughs> um, if you want to contact me outside this, I don't really use Twitter much, and uh, Twitter's kind of on fire at the moment. But I do have a Mesodon, so you can add me there and send me hate mail. So, um, give it your best shot, and um, you can also add me on Leak as well if you really want, because that's the main topic of the top thing today. So you can add me on that account, and you can flame me on there as well. So, uh, you know, if, you, if you're really creative, you can do it both, and then you know, come up with your best ones. Um, so what uh, about it? So 2020 happened. Um, we all were there. We all survived it. I hope. I'm still processing it. Um, but I guess we survived, and that's the main thing. Um, during the COVID lockdowns, I moved back to my parents in Balamina because I didn't want to live in Belfast on my own. And yeah, it was a fun time. Um, there wasn't really much things to do, especially in Balamina over lockdown. And so I kind of regressed back into what games I used to play when I, when I was younger and had a lot more free time since I find myself a lot more free time. <laughs> um, one of those games um, was League of Legends, um, a game with, I've wrote my notes, a notoriously friendly community. I was going to put the best flame I got, got up there, but I think it would violate the term, like the code of conduct a wee bit. And I suffered enough, you don't have to suffer too. Um, for the non if anyone ha um, isn't familiar with League of Legends, it's um, a team-based game um, where everyone sort of hate either hate as both the hates and loves each other at the same time. Um, where there's five positions, top lane, jungle, mid lane, bot lane, and support. This will be important later. The aim is to destroy the enemy's base by either team fighting or taking objectives. Um, so, uh, before I continue this, I do have a weak glossary. Um, there's going to be some terms I'm going to use that sort of needs explaining. So, here we go. So first thing's worth a smurf. He's not the wee purple wee and uh, not purple, sorry, the wee blue guy. Um he's friendly. These smurfs um have teeth and they're not very nice. They're usually high ranking players that play in lower ranked games often most of the times for ego reasons. Um, next we have Elo, a, a term that came from chess. Um anyone who played chess here probably recognises it. Um it's just basically another word for ranking. Um, an MMR, or match ranking rating, is how Riot Games, the maker of League of Legends, match you with other players. So they tend to match you with, um, with people of equal or the same or a wee bit higher MMR based on how you're performing. Um, this leads on to our next point, Smurf Q, um, Ban Law Hope, you enter here. Um, so the introduction of, the introduction of MMR, um, there is, it separates out New, genuine new players from people who are on their 25th band account and they're certainly 26th and you know it sort of protects them from the toxicity. League still is very toxic but at least it's not as bad as Murphy. And finally ending which is short for intentionally feeding. In League if you get killed you feed the team either gold and experience which sets your team behind. Do it well enough and you, your team is basically screwed. So that's some important terms. So back to the talk. Um, so some people I worked with, a former employer, also play League. 
and I made a lot of friends for that. I was like, this is great. It's like, even through COVID, I can still make some friends, even if they're online. Um, when I was playing with them, a particularly low-ranked friend um, actually made a complaint that really, really interested me. Um, but, and there's like these, these um, powerful players that weren't really, that clearly weren't human. And I, I don't actually mean this as like, they're so bad, they can't be human. I mean, that some people use. I mean this as an, as a clearly an animated programme, um, like a script running th these characters. And it was often in the support role. And if they didn't get the support role, they also picked champions that didn't really fit that role. They would just picked the support role because that's their all programmed to do. They would only pick one champion and do one thing. Um, I would often I would leave the team down a player, and you know, they would often pick characters that could just basically heal and shield and basically be, do the bare minimum to be AFK. And you know, they're easy enough to beat if you're vaguely compliment. So. You know, the team will almost certainly lose the game. So, you know, why is this? Because if, rank, if, you, if um, for league, most league players, ranked is a really, really big part of league. Um, it's like one of the big, big main attractions. Like most people want to get to like high, low, or at least gold to get the free skin. You know, or even you know, get into Apex tiers like Master, Grandmaster, and Challenger to um, you know even go professional. So why this goes kind of it's the anti uh, uh, antithesis antithesis yes that's the word antithesis of like what most most league players want to do. So why would they why would you purposely write a bot to lose games, um, and you know basically ruin the game experience for nine other people? So it starts the league has a ranking system and as the, as the bot loses more and more games it goes down to the lowest rank possible which is iron four upon but what happens if they reach this rank and they don't get banned because you know you're losing a lot of games and rat does tend to notice when you lose a lot of games um so what happens after these um these are accounts are actually sold on oftentimes for a large amount of money so as you, oh sorry um and you know, they're actually a lot more expensive than like a regular unranked account. Um, a regular unranked account usually goes for like eight, the cheapest I've seen is like two euro, and the most expensive I've seen is about 12 euro. But these ones can actually go for like up to $40 or even up to 100 if it's hand leveled, which means like someone's actually manually, not used a bot, but manually um, de ranked the account, which is, it sounds like a very painful experience if you ask me. Um, and it wasn't just my friend who had this problem. I looked on the League of Regents subreddit, and it's a very, very common problem. If you can see here, you know, I'm a new player, um, I'm trying to get out of low, low elo, and there's a lot of bots, and, you know, it, it's ruining the new player experience. Like, how can you be expected to progress, you know, with these bots investing ranked? And, you know, that's my face, but why though? Like, why would you want this low ranked account? Surely, you know, you wouldn't, would you not want a higher ranked account that, you know, you could show off your friends, like, for fake internet points, I guess. Um, so, but like, why, 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 you know, why do people want these accounts so badly? And they're willing to pay a lot more than a regular account for. Um, as you can see here, here's some prices. You can see $40, $50, cheapest there is like $20. That's like a hand, a hand um, deer end account, which is like, well, at least you get on sale, so uh, go quickly, everyone. Uh, actually, don't. It's against the league, t league term service, so maybe don't do that. Uh, <laughs> um, but you can see here, people are generally curious what Iron's like. This is from a website called League of Grass. This shows the amount of players that are currently in Iron. Uh, it's only about what. 40, 40, sorry, sorry, 4% of the power base, with iron 4 being the lowest, at uh, 0.46% of the power base. For context, this is where most of the power base provides bronze, silver, gold. You can see here that makes up the majority of the power base. And it's about the same, the same level, the same amount of people as people in the Apex tiers I mentioned earlier. 
So while people are really curious, like peop content creators make new like series de dedicating iron level gameplay, such as Ross Boomsocks, Iron Spectates, you can see there. Um, they're actually quite respectful. It's like, oh hey, you know, we all make mistakes and stuff like that. Um, you know, people want to play an iron, and see what it's like. Is it really that chaotic? Is it really that bad? Because people make it out to be. And like, there's even streams such as Salty Teemo, as you can see here, where you can actually bet on the Iron Level gameplay. Um, so get betting, folks. You know, maybe you might win big imaginary internet points. So, and even and even here's even more reasons. People often complain. This is from a a, a website that was selling Iron Four accounts. People often complain about Elo Hell. There are difficulties with teammates and how reliable they can be. Well, let me assure you, what you have seen, unless you've had Iron experience, you don't know anything yet. By starting fresh by accounting Iron, you're choosing to surround yourself with the absolute worst players in the guitar game. The bottom of the barrel, 1%, so competent that you can't even begin to describe it. Playing in Iron is an experience, which is a bit harsh. I mean, why are we judging people being bad at video games? But hey, I guess they want to sell accounts, so. It's like, and to compound this, it's actually extremely hard to get an iron without expending a lot of effort in the first place. Sometimes, you know, while losing games, you'll get banned by Riot because you're intentionally feeding or you're intentionally losing games and, you know, it's really a game experience for dying other people. Riot, understandably, does not like that. And also, it's kind of miserable because you're constantly losing games and, you know, would you not have something better to do with your time? But I guess I play a league, so I can't really talk. Um, so I actually asked two high-ranked players on the EU, uh, um, EUS server about uh, what is harder, either getting their current rank or their peak rank or getting into Aaron. So um, I asked this player called Noor Motley. He was actually, uh, he, uh, well, while talking to him, he actually liked to be sure, reassure you all. He has both his arms. He just got called up because he, he got flamed and he thought it was funny. So that's his name. Um, this is what he said. I think firstly, it's a lot harder to hit Challenger. The percentage of the Challenger is even smaller than the Iron 4, I'm pretty sure. So Iron is so much easier to reach purely based on that. And secondly, it's easier to learn the skill set to consistently lose while everything is trying to win, rather than learn the skill set of trying to win when everyone, everyone else is trying to win. You're competing first your own team rather than the enemy team, which is realistically much easier. So you actually disagree with me on that point, that it's actually quite hard to get the Iron. Um, I asked, and I also asked another creator called Urpog. Um, he said that you know it's actually quite harder. He just actually disagreed at that point as well. So there's a lot of disagreements going on. Um, that's actually easier to climb if you're good at the game, and you know you have to purposely lose a lot of games if you're manually deranking. It's it's a hard it's a hard it's a hard place, and you know. It's a lot of effort just to see what how bad people can be. Um, if you're really that interested. But another more insidious reason is that people, some high ranking players want to smurf um, on genuine low ranking players um, for ego reasons. Um, there's a famous trader called Rat IRL um, here, where he, this is a quote from one of his videos. I'm kind of in league zone. I love stomping iron players. It's the big biggest ego boost in assistance. And then you go to go on your main account and you're just going to stomp because you're in the zone and you think you're unstoppable. Um, you know, and it, it's content for them, it's like, it's actual, you know, it's like, you know, stuff to fill your YouTube channel with, you can do like, Iron x rank series, this is how bad Iron players can be, and this is me stomping on them, which is kind of sad, but okay, I, you know, and I asked, um, the two previous high ranking players asked beforehand, I, uh, I asked him about it, saying, hey, what do you think of these, these people doing it? Why, why, why do people do this? Um, what they did say that is very damaging to the lower player experience experience and the ecosystem as a whole. Like, what's the fun in playing the game where you're just going to get stomped? That's not, that doesn't sound much fun for anyone, st stompy. And, you know, and Urpog did say, you know, if you want to buy, people want to buy Iron Crowns because they want to feel better and it's cringe, and I would wholeheartedly agree with that. So, 
And the community doesn't, isn't a big fan of this as well. People in the uh, subreddit have called out streamers for buying these accounts, um, ruining the game experience, and you know, just stomping on people. Um, it's very, very unpopular in the community. And this, this is what what happens often when you buy these accounts. This is before this is before the red stuff. That's all the bot. The top stuff is after the account has been bought. So. I guess it, it's worth your dignity, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, we know how, uh, how to explain the problem. We know how damaging this, be, this can be to the lower player, rugged players. You know, how can we make this better? How, how can we solve this problem? Um, well, at least these bo the, the good thing about this is these bots share se several characteristics, which we can, means we can categorise them. Um, they only really play in the support role, which um, you know is relatively low impact. But if you're playing bot lane with a bad support, it's kind of bad. <laughs> um, and they only usually, usually pay champions that can heal and shield without going AFK. So Janna, Yumi, Soraka, Ta Morgana, Tarek, Sona, and you know these champions all have a, a spammable heal and shield. That makes makes them look like they're actually playing the game, the actual human player playing the game. So it's easy enough to be automated. You can just say, "Hey, press this skill every ten, you know, ten seconds, or off cooldown, and here you go, Bob's your uncle." Um, they also tend to um, take the same summoner spells each game. So for the context, summoner spells are things um, that you can do to change, you know, the game experience. So like, say you have flash, you can get away from your enemy; it's approaching you. Or you could you have cleanse, you can get rid of the old people trying to stun you. Um, even if it's not really particular suited to that particular champion. So for example, as you can see here, Yumi, the magical cat, her particular gimmick is she hops onto a champion and she is safe as long as her host champion is safe. Um, there's no need to really for her to take flash. So if you see a Yumi with flash, that's most obviously a bot. But it's not, it's like, it's not often a really good categorisation for um, most um, cha champions that aren't Yumi, so it's really Yumi specific. Um, also, because Yumi just attaches to the champion that she's the host with, um, it's perfect for those AFK bots, they can just spam heal and, you know. And also, runes, runes as well, runes are a system that, you know, you can you improve your game experience, you, you can change your champion, say like, hey, I want more shield power, or hey, I want to last longer in fights. That's basically the, the, the run of it. They tend to take those that automatically shield an, um, um, an ally. So some predictor ones that might be useful are Guardian and Summon Airy. So those ones I took, I took a predictor note of um, when I was trying to categorise these bots. And sometimes these bots will take strange runes, they'll just take whatever, so they'll take like something that's very, very unfitting. Like, you know, some, I've seen some really weird stuff <laughs> while well, um, looking up. Sometimes, it's not always looking into here, because it could be just a real person who dropped the change of runes, and it happens, happens to the best of us. Um, but it's always a good thing to know. And finally, they do tend to spam a lot of games more than a human can reasonably, be, reasonably do. I mean, I know I have no life. I don't really get out much, but um, they play a lot more games than I do. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's not always good. And, oh, oh, sorry. And finally, uh, not finally, sorry. They usually have a tend to have very low win weight and ranking. So you can tell, like, you know, they're, you know, they're iron, they're iron, or okay. um, you know they're not, you know they're not very good ranking, and they tend to have like thirty percent win rate. But you know we have to take into account that it could be a, you know a new player or a very unlucky player. And finally, they do tend to have a very particular skill order, as I mentioned before. They tend to max out their heals first, and never ever use their poke spells, um, you know, to damage their enemy champion because you know unless it's point and click. It's going to look random and it's going to look very obvious that it's a bot. Um, so you'll heal randomly on timers and stuff like that. And lucky for us, there's someone who had to suffer for your bot and they made <laughs> a big list, <laughs> which is pretty cool. 
Um, so I kind of used that as well. So now that we know what to look out for, we can categorise them using machine learning, which is really cool. Um, so how do we get this data? How can we get all this data that I mentioned before? Well, Riot has uh, provided us with several APIs that we can use to get this data. Um, the main one that we'll be using is one called Cassiopeia, which is their um, wrapper for Python. Which is kind of fitting because Cassiopeia is a snake lady and pythons are snakes, so it works. Um, so from Cassiopeia, what can we need? Um, sorry, I tried to put random parts there. Um, I hope you like that part, he's my favourite. Um, we can get Sumner info, which is their player, which is why it calls players. From this, we can access Mass History, their champion masteries, um, because of the amount of games they spam. Um, they have a lot of mastery on the champion, but could be like a real player. We can also see from the match history the amount of games played, which is a good indicator, and calculate your win yet, your skill order, ruins for each match. So considering all this, um, how can we feed this information to a potential machine learning model? Oh, and here we have uh, the Sumner uh, object. So we, what I did was I used uh, Python's inbuilt, uh, sorry, inbuilt uh, CSV library um, to create a CSV and I um, didn't have access to my per personal computer so I made a, a fake CSV that sort of shows you um, what you know what what it would look like it look, kind of looks a lot more detailed than that but I was short on time so I do apologize um, you can blame me for that by the way if you want and now for the fun part um, Quite the same, I failed my maths GCSE twice. I am not very good at maths. I am not very good at statistics. Some of this maths stuff is a bit weird to me. So, um, yeah, that's me right now. <laughs> um, so, what do we do with our CSV? Well, sorry, uh, that kind of spoils it. So, but here, you can enjoy that for a while. I found this article <laughs> that did something similar with Twitter bots, like categorising Twitter bots using machine learning. And uh, I think Pablo Gagasco, I kind of spoiled it, I do apologise, had a really good quote. Good artist copy, good artist steal, and I'm a great artist. <laughs> so um, I kind of stole um, kind of what he did. But it's also, you know, if you're looking for stuff to do, there's no point in reinventing the wheel. You know, you can always look at what other people have done. And especially if you're an agent like me, who can copy paste as well, um, you know, it's always good. And, you know, I was, I was always, always looking at tutorials and stuff like that, but I kind of got sick of categorizing irises all the time. I wanted to categorize bots, because they're fun and exciting. Um, so this is the person I stole from, well, no, well stole is a very strong word. Um, but um, I kind of used what he used, like libraries and stuff like that, and a particular model. Um, so it's a really good article. I really do recommend you read it if you have the chance. Um, so I use like XP, X, sorry, I can never say it right. XPD classifier model, uh, which is part of X, XGBoost and SKLearn and Pandas, all those cool libraries I kind of stole and uh, use it to use um, categorize my bots. So how do we? But first thing first, we need um, test data to, to train the model. So how do we find this? Well, there's a, a website called op.gg, which um, lists mass, ma match history for some nerds and stuff like that. So you can easily find them if you go to like, the very, 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 very back pages of um, the ranking leaderboards on op.gg. Oh, sorry, I can never say it right. op.gg, you can find um, definitely bot accounts that look like this. So it's like, happy days, I'm going to use this uh, as test data. So I gathered a lot of them, and I do use it to train them all. So just great. Um, so yes, so now we've trained them all, we can classify them and do all that cool stuff. So where do we go from here? Or more importantly, what have we learned? I hope we've learned something today. I'm not, I'm not a teacher, I don't want to be like a teacher. Uh, lecturing you, maybe maybe you know, you can take something away. So, um, well, you know, I would love to do a proper front end for this um, project. I am not a front end uh, developer. Um, most of my websites kind of look like this. Graphic design is my passion. I'm not very good at graphic design, but graphic design is most definitely my passion. Um, 
So I would love to do a proper front end so people don't have to suffer through my script for using Cassiopeia to get scraped the data and then um, some stolen scripts to characterize the data. Um, false positives are a big worry for mine. I don't want to shame people for being bad at video games. I mean, I don't, really, I don't want, my, want my tool to be used as a tool to harass people because I know how league players can be. Um, they can be a bit nasty at times and I don't want people to use my tools like, haha, you're a bot, you're, you're so bad, you must be a bot. And funny enough, while I was doing research for this, Riot actually had the same problem. Um, a video by um, a content creator on YouTube called Dong Hwap, he actually mentioned that most Yumi players, the champion I mentioned earlier, who reside in Ireland are actually banned by Riot because they're just assumed to be bots, like they just blanket ban them. So it's interesting to see that Riot has the same problem too. And I was wondering, like, is it impossible to get to even get rid of false positives? I don't really think so, because there's always going to be false positives no matter what you do. But it's interesting to see. Um, and also, like, I don't really have the manpower. Riot is a multi-million dollar company. I am an Egypt who knows how to copy paste and likes parts. That's all I can do. Um, <laughs> um, and also, like, I, I was thinking, like, ideas to how, you know, I could um, develop this further, like, maybe using video, like, people could send in replays to say, like, okay, is it, is this user act like a bot? Um, stuff like that. And, but also, uh, what really put a span on my works is, like, Riot recently introduced for ranked um, solo queue, uh, champion select anon anonymity, which means that, um, you know, I was going to use it as a tool to, you know, people can submit, like, hey, here's a bot, dodge them, or here's a bot, avoid them. But with Champions Select I mean, it's kind of like, oh, well, that kind of free a spanner in my work. Um, but it was a fun project. It was a really fun project, and I really enjoyed myself doing it, because I'd never really worked with machine learning before. I've mostly been, like, a really back-end doing APIs and stuff like that. So it was kind of really cool to, you know, do all this sort of stuff. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm still extremely new to um, machine learning, and I'd love to do more. Like, I, I want, it's, it's kind of, it's, this pro project is kind of, um, you know, inspired a passion in me to do, you know, more machine learning projects. Um, so it's like, yes, I want to do more. This is cool. Um, even though this is copy paste, it's cool. <laughs> um, and also, I'm a pirate dude, so uh, you love it. <laughs> so, um, but last but not least, I, I kind of want to send some thanks out, um, mostly to Nora Motley and Erpog for answering, taking the time out to you know, answer my questions. Um, you know, there's their Twitch links, you know, pay them a wee visit, you know, send them we've got sent you, you know, um, you know, stuff like that, you know, would be nice to see. And the um, current team of Zara Voice um, really, um, you know, help me out and all and stuff like that. Um, you know, they're very really intrigued by this talk and you know they're very excited they're all hyping me up so I just want to say thanks to them and finally last but not least you thanks so much for coming